And we're looking for the perfect beat, baby. Yeah. <laughs> he's not late. dead. He's just late. He's just... He's parking the car so still. <laughs> what do you do? Can we just say he's late, then? Today's podcast might kill you. For real. What's up? It's the Jubal Show. I'm your host, Jubal Fresh. Thank you very much for checking out my podcast. It comes out every single Wednesday, even if it's a little later in the day. I apologize. Look, I I, I edit these all together myself. Uh, I'm doing like three different podcasts. So the Jubal Show comes out on Wednesday, which is the day between uh, Tuesday and Thursday in the week. Um, but that's when it comes out. So shit. God damn it. I'm leaving that in. I'm leaving that in and I'm not editing it. You know what just happened? So the podcast is on iTunes as well as YouTube, but uh, I filmed today's podcast and so my camera wasn't plugged in for a lot of it. And I'm looking at the camera while I'm speaking into the microphone and I see the red light blinking on it a little bit. Oh shit, battery's about to die. But my quick thinking and my cat-like reflexes, I was able to jump up, go around the table that I do the podcast at, plug in the camera so it's not dead, and it's all good now. Like I was saying, though, the Jubal Show podcast comes out every single Wednesday, which is the day between Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, make sure you rate and review that. Do me a favor. Don't be a dickhead. Rate and review it. Also, the Fresh Till Death podcast, which I do with my hot-ass wife, Alex Fresh. That comes out every single Monday. Also, rate and review that. And then the podcast, which, holy shit, this weekend's podcast was ridiculous. That comes out on Tuesdays, and that's only a YouTube thing because uh, it's a lot of audio. It wouldn't really make sense to you on the iTunes. So make sure you check this week's out, though. I've, I've rollerbladed uh, once or twice in my life, and I've always been terrible at any kind of blading sports, whether it's uh, rollerblading roller skating, ice skating, any kind of skating, even uh, 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 what's the boarding? You know, the snowboard, the boarding they do in the snow. Oh, snowboarding. That makes sense. Um, even snowboarding, man. Just terrible. Any of that kind of stuff. I used to surf as a kid. I wasn't the best, but uh, and I didn't do it for that long. And actually, I was fucking terrible at surfing. So never mind. Any of that balance kind of stuff, not good. And then my hot ass wife, Alex Fresh, gets me high impromptu gets me high by the way just comes home and surprises me and says hey we're doing the podcast here's some rollerblades get out there i am so bad so if you just check this out on itunes make sure you go to youtube youtube.com slash jubal fresh and check out the podcast the title of it is rollerblade tutorial and it's it it, it shows my uh, athletic prowess off and I have no prowess at all, so it doesn't show. It just shows me falling down a whole lot. Um, but today's podcast, man. Oh, also, one more thing. Uh, those clips that you heard at the beginning of the show, if those made absolutely no sense to you, hopefully you've listened to the podcast for a while now because you know what I'm about to say. Go back and listen to the other podcast, last week's podcast, because that's where that audio came from. So check it out. But today, uh, all right, I'm going to have to bring it down. You know I like to joke around and stuff, but today... Crazy podcast in store. I'm a big fan of the true crime type stuff. You know, I mean, I even did one of those podcasts about that guy in Turks and Caicos who ripped people off for hundreds of millions of dollars. It's all interesting to me, these true crime stories. And uh, there was the Ted Bundy documentary. There's all these Netflix, Hulu docs on uh, serial killers. And I was like, wouldn't it be amazing to do a podcast where I actually sit down with a serial killer and ask him some questions. And I was able to do that. And I got to tell you, I, I still am kind of shook to sit next to this guy and just look into his just dead soulless eyes. Uh, 
but at the same time, very endearing. And I guess that's the way that a lot of serial killers are. He was strange, very weird, but also very likable. Um, I was able to, a couple of times he made me laugh, uh, but he did, most of the time he just really scared me and I didn't want to be around him, but, but he's the kind of guy that would really, really creep you out and then eventually say something where you're like, oh, you're not that bad of a guy. Oh, wait a second. You're a goddamn serial killer. You're the worst kind of guy. One of the worst kinds of guys. There are, there are a few really bad levels of guys, but you're definitely top three on the list of bad guys. Serial killers, not good. Kind of rude. Serial killers are rude. And uh, I didn't tell him that because I was scared of him, but it was just a really, really, really mind-blowing experience to sit next to this murderer with a heart of gold, like a really nice murderer, and and ask him some questions. So I hope you enjoyed the interview. Um, his name is Sage Willowbrook. Uh, and thankfully I was able to track him down. And, you know, whether you're listening on iTunes or you're watching the video on YouTube, I think this is a very powerful interview because it showcases a side of humanity that we don't really want to talk about ever, understandably. Uh, but it was a really candid interview and he was very honest about quite a few things. So enjoy my interview with the, uh, the – enjoy this week's Jubal Show podcast as I go inside the mind of a serial killer with my interview with the notorious Sage Willowbrook. Uh, rate and review the podcast, and I hope you enjoy the interview. See ya. Hi. 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 Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you for having me. It's, it's yeah. exciting. I've never been on a podcast before. Well, it's cool to have you. I know you haven't done a lot. I like your glasses, yeah. by the way. It's cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just got these glasses. Um, they're not really my prescription, but um, I sort of I got them from a friend of mine, and I thought I would wear them to the interview because we said it was going to be recorded for the YouTube, and so I wanted to look my best, and nobody looks as good as, well, looked as good as my friend who used to wear these glasses. So it's a pleasure to be here. I don't do a lot of interviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Um is it safe to say that you're a, a serial killer? Is that, <laughs> well, can I call you that? I I yeah. don't really like to put labels on much. Uh -huh. um, I would say I'm more of a serial thriller. Oh. <laughs> that was that's a little bit of a joke that we use in the community. But, uh, okay. but no, I would say I'm more of a. Um, I I guess I would call it a a murder enthusiast. It's oh. sort of a, it's a, I mean, it's it's a fun hobby sort of that I picked up. It's and, a hobby. Um, but I don't it's like the term killer. It's sort of a derogatory term, so I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't call me a killer. Uh, okay. What, well, I mean, I guess people don't really want to be called killers, yes, right? Yes, that's true. That um, a lot of people don't know this about uh, me and my, you know, other, I almost, I almost said it. Shame on me. Almost. Said what? I almost said the K word. Killer? And I was thinking, shame on me, because if uh -huh. I were to call myself that, then I would have to punish myself like other people who have called me that before. Oh. <laughs> anyway, okay. um, you, what were you saying again? I was kind of saying, when did it all begin? Oh, when, like, so how did when did it everything start? begin? <sighs> That's a good question. Do you mean... Um, I mean, when did you start oh, when oh, you start killing people? Well, now, now I, don't like to, I don't like to refer to it as killing again. So if you could please not do that. that well, then, I mean, I guess what would you call it then? Something. It sounds like. Uh, I would just like, well, I. It's not often somebody gets the best of Sage, is it? What do you mean? Congratulations. I guess you did. You got the best of me this one time, but it won't happen again. I promise. So we'll call it killing. <laughs> we'll call it because I, okay. I right now I just can't think of another name for it. Right. Because that's what again, it is. Again. If there are any sort of authority figures listening, oh. this is all just for video podcast fun. Mm. But I just don't know another word to call it. So, yes, I guess you can say killing. killing? Okay. I'm going to drink a little bit of water. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what's your method was what I was asking. Oh, <laughs> I... Uh, 
I'm going to have to ask you respectfully, and I'm going to hope that maybe you can listen because I would hate to start to raise my voice. Okay, please don't. Because I don't really, because I agreed to the interview, I don't want to get too angry. Right. So I, I, I like to try to be very calm and even keel like I am right now. Okay. So, uh, I forget what I was saying again. Yeah, I was asking about your methods. Uh, oh, my method. Yeah. You mean my method as to how I wake up in the morning and start my day and no. try to approach the day with the most positive attitude possible? Well, N- no. I try I, to get... I meant how oh. you kill people. <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, I guess I can see this is going to be sort of a uh, um, one-topic interview, sort of <laughs> you asked me to be on your podcast because you want to know how I kill people. commit murder. Some call it murder, some yeah. call it tomato. <laughs> I don't, I don't um, think that's... So I'll call I'll, it tomato. So okay. you're wondering how I commit tomato? Yes. Well, how do you commit tomato? Okay, my method for that is it varies quite a bit. See, uh-huh. the thing that a lot of people don't know about me and my other serial tomatoers. <laughs> that was super funny. Super. My other serial tomatoers uh-huh. is... You know, that you grow over time, sort of sort of like you do. You've been doing stand-up comedy for a while. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Y- yes, yeah. you have. Yeah. Yes, I have. You've been doing stand-up comedy for a while. You've been yeah. working on a radio show for a while, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, you have. Y- yes, I have. So, what I was saying was you grow over time. Right. You're not always the same person, are you? No. When you first started off doing your comedy shows, uh-huh. were you the same type of comedian as you are now? Not at all. No. no. You're, you're quite different. You changed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so I changed over time, and my methods have always... There's, I don't... I'm a man who sort of likes to be... Uh-huh. Whimsical and fun. Yeah, you seem and like And I don't really like people knowing exactly how I'm going to approach them or approach the situation. Okay. So basically, I try to mix it up quite a bit. There's uh-huh. no method to my madness, but there is a madness to my method. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Um, how many victims would you say? Oh, that you have? <laughs> victims. Yeah. That's another word, isn't victims. it? Yes. Isn't that a that word? Victims is a word. That's another one of those words that people like to say that makes what I do sound naughty. Well. But it is sort of naughty, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it well, is. I don't like to call them victims. Uh-huh. First of all, most of the time I'll call them friends. Okay. Or former friends. Or ex-friends. Oh. Or dinner guests. Got it. So if I were to say how many dinner guests have I had tomatoes with? Yes. Is that what we're calling it? Yes, that's what we're How calling many it. How many dinner guests have I had tomatoes, tomatoes with? with? Yes. Hmm. Well, let's see. I've been alive for uh uh-huh. year. I'm proud of myself. Oh, it's too many to count. Oh God! And I'm pretty good at math. Wow. Sometimes you just have to pat yourself on the back. Uh, for being passionate about something, isn't that right? Congratulations, I guess. Yeah. That's cool. Have uh, anybody survived? You ever anybody survived? Oh uh, well, <laughs> yes, there have. I know. Okay. So even somebody who's very skilled at being a serial tomatoer like myself, <laughs> right? Every once in a while, we have a bit of a slip up, don't we? Don't I we suppose everybody ups? sometimes <laughs> because you do stand up comedy. I bet not every single one of your shows is great. No, you don't no, no. kill every time, do you? No. <laughs> No. Maybe that's kill. the difference between you and I. Yeah, I don't kill. In our professions. Yeah, I don't kill at all. When you're doing stand-up comedy, uh-huh. you always try to kill. Yes. But you can't kill every time. When you do my job, uh huh. usually you kill every time. Okay. <laughs> don't you wish you were a stand-up comedian now? Anyway, no, um, really. I have had some people sort uh-huh. of... Well, I don't like to say survive. I sort of... I, I'm big on language right now, and uh, using the right word. So it's sort of like a goodbye. Uh-huh. Uh, sometimes you don't want to say goodbye. You want to say, I'll right. see you later. So okay. I don't like to call them survivors. I like to call them... Um, what do you call them? Well, you know the saying, if you love something, let it go. Right, yeah, I know that one. So and if you happen to find it again, y- y- then it was meant to be. I think it's... F- or if you love something, let it go. 
uh-huh. and then track it and track it and track it and track it until Definitely not they the think same. that everything is fine. And then wake them up in the middle of the night. No. That's not <laughs> sort of the same theory, right? I suppose, yeah. but that's... I'm going to take another drink of water. Definitely. Yeah, go for it. That's definitely not the saying, though. Oh, my God. Do you have any remorse for anything? Do I have any... Remorse? Horses? Did you say horses? No, I said remorse. Oh, remorse. Well, um, that's an interesting question. It, yeah. Because what is remorse? Or is that like... I'm a, asking. I mean, it's like... Do you feel I don't bad? know what remorse is. I mean, it's like, do you feel bad for people? Oh, no. Oh. Next question. That's it. So you don't have any remorse at all for tomatoing people. I, well, I guess if I don't know the meaning of a word, I can't have any, can I? <laughs> <laughs> guess not. Yeah, no. No, that would be a cor- That is correct. It'd be a no. Okay, so no, you don't have any remorse. No. What was your relationship like with the parents? Like, how oh. was that whole thing growing up? Well, this is sort of like I do with my dinner guests before we feed, eat, before we eat. Eat. I like to ask the deep diving questions, sort uh-huh. of like you're doing right now. <laughs> well, thanks. My relationship with my parents was, uh-huh. um, it was great. Really? We had a great, good old time. That sounds sarcastic. Until, of course. They passed on after oh. you know, I was five years old. and Oh, no. Like any young boy, I was really attached to them. I thought they were wonderful parents. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, one day, wouldn't you know, the house just sort of caught fire and uh, it burned down. Huh. And I okay. escaped with a um, few of my toys. And I just remember standing out there on the lawn while the fire crew was... Trying to put out the fire because they try to do that, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> they do. They were trying to put out the fire and Scary. I was watching the blaze. Uh-huh. And I could see the, I can just feel the flame shimmering in my pupils. Yes. And I was standing there smiling because smiling. I know that I had done a good thing that day you, when you the house it. caught on fire and my parents perished in the ashes. I knew I had done a good thing. You did a good thing. And I what sm- good thing did you do? Oh, I uh, well, I knew that I had done a good thing by rescuing my my stuffed animals out of the house as it was burning. What about your yeah. parents? Well, they couldn't really get out of the house, could they? I don't know how many house fires you've been involved in. I'm assuming, like most people, you've been involved with quite a few. No, n- never, not one. Never a house, never a house fire. Never. Uh-uh. <laughs> who? I should be interviewing you. <laughs> I don't know many people who haven't been involved in a house fire. Huh. So anyway, sometimes in house fires, furniture will block a doorway, and then you can't get out so. of the house. So no. that's what apparently happened when I was a young boy. Somehow a piano got pushed in front of the doorway, or uh-huh. I'm sorry, it must have fallen in front of the do- fallen. Not, got it, not pushed in front of the doorway. And next thing you know, the house was in flames, and uh-huh. that was the last time I saw. That's the last time I saw them. Okay, so since you lost your parents young, what was your childhood like? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the confusion. I think what you meant was, um, what you meant was by losing them was they perished? Yes. They perished? Yeah. Perished is a word that sounds a lot like parrot, isn't it? Not really. It's sort of a fun word. I mean, I guess. I had a parrot once, too. Okay, I don't... It's funny because my parrot... Am I getting off on a tangent? Yeah, a little bit. I just wanted to tell you, it's funny because I had a parrot who perished. I was asking what your childhood childhood was like. Well, childhood. my childhood was... I would say it was a lot of fun. Really? Um, I got to run around in the woods Uh with my friends and... Sounds cool. ...play a lot of fun games with Mm -hmm. my friends and... Mm -hmm. Childhood was hard, <laughs> really? and it was especially hard because I've always been a big fan of cats. Yeah, yeah, cats not are... the play. Have you ever seen the play Cats? No, I don't yeah? care to. No. Yeah, neither have I. But uh-huh. I did have many cats growing up. Right, and it's always hard when you own cats, uh-huh. and then they just seem to they keep perishing as well. Right? Oh, I would always, you know, because my parents they they passed on. In the fire. The fire, yeah. And so all all I had were my cats. But every mm-hmm. single time I'd get a cat, 
Or something would happen to it. I, I, well, it's really a mystery. I had about ten cats growing up. Ten. One of them, you know, you come home and, oh boy, Fluffy, how did you get your paw stuck in the outlet, the electrical outlet? Now you're all fried. Okay, Bad that. kittens get fried. <laughs> and then, you know, maybe one will jump off of a roof or something. Uh-huh. And then, of course, I don't know how they do it, but I... Have you ever had a kitten that that uh, gets in the blender and somehow reaches out with his tiny little paw and just presses the on button on the blender? Definitely never. You've never. No. I. It was a mystery to me. I don't. How that happened. Uh huh. The home that I stayed in, they they thought it was me who did it. Wow! Wow! I, I can, can you see how. That? It sounds like you were killing the cats. Oh, <laughs> were you killing them? And that's exactly what they that's what said. It sounds at, like. Well, the home that I was at at the time, they said, "Hey, Sage," and I was, you know, I, I, you, that, that was that was back in the days when I used to like sleep like a bat. So, I was in the closet hanging upside down as usual, and they opened up the doors, and I hissed at them and said, <laughs> "Just fun games that kids play." And so, anyway, they said, "Sage." Can I ask you a question? And I said, that was yes. You scare me when you do that. When I was that age. And they said, are you putting cats in the blender? Uh-huh. And, um, and what did you say? And I said, no, uh-huh. no. But then I sort of giggled. <laughs> like and that. And I guess they thought that giggle meant yes. And so they moved me to a different home. Uh-huh. But they didn't have any cats. Oh, well, that's no cats there, good. unfortunately. Um, I think that's good. But I do have cats now. Oh, no. How many? Okay, how many cats do you have? Um, well, I have to think. Let me think back okay. really quickly here. So I have a bit of a photographic memory. I just need to look at. I just need to remember what the inside of my refrigerator looks like. And four, four, four. of them. It's right next to my Super Coffee. You know, I heard if you go to Super Coffee, if you go to DrinkSuperCoffee dot com and use your code Fresh, yeah, you can get a discount on coffee. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's quite amazing. I'm going to try that later. You should. It's good. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of serial killers mm. keep trophies. So, do you keep any trophies of your, um, you know, the people? Oh, well, that's a fun question, isn't it? Mm, do you have any trophies from when you were younger? Oh, yeah. Like trophy, sports. sports trophies. Yes, that's fun. Yeah. Um, I do, I guess. You could say once in a while, Sagey gets a little shoplifty. <laughs> I call it shoplifty. What does that mean? Because I'm not really in a store, am I? No. No, I'm just sort of trouncing around. Maybe I don't want to give too many details because, again, sometimes I get visited by authority figures and they get a little angry with me and they ask yeah. me all kinds of questions so <laughs> um but yes sometimes i will be in a store we'll call it a store shopping for tomatoes got it okay i'm in the grocery store looking to get some good tomatoes i think we all and get I'll it. take something yes. sort of like my spectacles here oh these glasses are not my prescription oh at all those are a trophy they are definitely not my prescription. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Those are a trophy. They're my friend's prescription. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm anyway, um, that soon when it comes to after I've you know, like the trophy, what? Had huh? dinner with my friend enough times, my eyes will start to become like his, and the prescription will work. Oh God! I hear that if you eat enough sloppy Joe, you start to see like Joe. That is disturbing. So, um, yeah, a lot of people. Yes. Have followed your cases that, you know, uh, and they noted that you've been acquitted of murder tomato. a bunch of times already. Tomato. Can we call it tomato? tomato? There's a bunch of 36 additional cases. Yes. Yes, I would uh, say so. That's fun. It's quite How were you being acquitted, though? Have you heard of a basketball? Yeah. Have you heard of basketball players? I have. Have you ever tasted a basketball player? Absolutely not. Have you? Me neither. Oh. Well... Okay. In basketball, uh-huh. um, there are a few people who sort of excel at what they do. Right. Have you heard of LeBron James? I have. Did you ever hear of Michael Jordan? Definitely. Did you he- ever hear of Tom Sedgwick? Never. Who's that? You wouldn't have. Oh. He's a friend of mine who played basketball. Oh. He came over for dinner once, and oh. guess what? He, he didn't make it out of there. He was a tough guy. Oh, he was tough. 
Wait. Oh, I guess that's why I was using the basketball reference. I I yeah. have lawyers, and I um I like to call my lawyers the LeBron James of law, because they're very talented. Also, I have quite a bit of money saved up. Wait, where do you get the money for these lawyers? These great lawyers. Well, okay, so I have a bit of money from well the fire. Remember the fire days. Do you remember back when you and I were talking about the fire? Like two minutes ago. And yeah. my parents. I do. And standing out there with my stuffy. Yeah. Watching the house burn down. Yeah. Well, I got some money from the insurance company for that. Wow. And then also, uh huh. I guess my daddy had quite a bit of money saved up and he uh, left it for me. And once I turned 18, you got all the money. I got all of the money that he had left for me and wow. all of the insurance money. And the funny thing about money is sometimes. You can pay a visit to a judge. Uh-huh. Oh. You ever paid a visit to a judge? Well, uh, no, no, yeah. I haven't. Well, you can pay a visit to their their front door. I don't think you're supposed you to. You can though. knock on the door and you can say hi. Oh, it's me, Sage Willowbrook. Do you yeah. remember when, when just a few hours ago we were in court together and yeah. we were talking about all these tomatoes that I had done? Right. And usually they'll say, "Get off my property, or I'm going to call the police." And I'll say, "I've." Uh-huh. I've snipped all the wires to the security system, so maybe we should continue to speak. And I'll say it really politely like that. And then they'll sort of stand there, and and I know that they're okay to, to talk at that moment. Right. And then I'll hand them some money in an envelope, uh-huh. and I'll say, I'm still free on bail for a little while, so maybe you want to take this and count it out and uh-huh. see if there should be a mistrial, or maybe you want to not okay. have a mistrial and then we can uh-huh. be a little more intimate the next time we see each other it's really quite simple it doesn't actually s- sound that easy let's say you're in the future you're not acquitted and then you end up on death row what would your last meal be tough question It'd be. you see because i have quite an extensive palate i like to eat all sorts of things so what would my last meal be do you know any prison guards <laughs> i don't no well, uh, I, you know, I've been, I have been to prison one time. Uh huh. And I think his name was John. So you're saying John would be your last meal? Does that answer the question? Is you saying it would be the, your last meal? Well, it would be with John, yes. I would have my last meal with the prison card you can't, name, named John that I remember. You can't. But I would also be willing to have the last meal of whatever the prison card was on duty. You can't eat a prison guard. What are you going to eat? No, no eating. Yes, it would be with John or. No, you can't eat a person. Like, try to think vegan for a second. Food. Like, would you have a vegan meal on death row or something? Oh, Just oh vegan. my goodness! Can you imagine that sage being a vegan? I have eaten vegan. I have eaten vegan before. Yeah, like if you're vegan or something. Oh no, they were a vegan. The meat was very, uh, a very protein rich. Surprisingly. But I have eaten vegan, and I didn't. I guess I didn't really like it that much. Um, so you're asking again? I was asking what your last meal would be. But I just wanna. I just have one more question. So let's say uh, you know there's like a lot of abortion stuff in the news right now. Are you pro or against abortion and a woman's right to choose? Like, what is your stance on that? Because oh, I think abortion is amazing. It's one of my favorite medical procedures. I, well, I actually think it should be used a lot more often. It makes sense, I guess. I like to think of myself as an abortion doctor. Well, I mean, you're not wrong. Yes. I'm. Well, yeah, that's another term that I use. We talked about tomato as kind of a code word, but also uh-huh. super late-term abortion. So, so let's say somebody's 50 years old. Uh-huh. Well, I don't like to think of that as murder because murder is quite sad, yes? Yeah, yeah. I just like to think of it as a late-term abortion. So I am all for it. I figured you would be. I don't like to think of it as an abortion at all. I like to to call it an adortion. Oh, that's cute. If if we change the way we use words, sometimes Uh words don't hurt as much. So, hi, baby, I'm going to abort you. Could sound bad. Hi, baby, I'm going to adort you. (laughs) That sounds nice. No, I don't. I don't think so. You know what? I think we're done, man. Uh, thank oh, you for coming by. I, I could stay longer if you'd like. Are you? No, sh- it's, it's could, perfectly. We, I, I, I think can we're done. make you supper. Would no, you like to be supper? Not. Nope, definitely not. Are you sure? Is, I, is your family home? Nope. Can I just nobody's say here, hi? Just me and you. Anybody? Nope. I can say? No, nope. no, no, nobody. 
Okay. Nobody's here. Uh, can I can see your keys? Can no, I can copy you don't have my keys. Keys? No. Oh. Okay. It's over. I guess Interviews I'll done. be. Uh, I guess I'll be. Leave. Going. Leave. Oh, you see me doing yes. the air quotes with my hands done. I I see you okay, doing I'm the going air quotes to actually with your hands. Thank you for Please the interview. Actually. Thank you Please for your time. Leave. That was fantastic. Yeah. That was fantastic. Okay. okay All right. Bye. Bye.